Hi everyone, we continue from tomorrow about absolute truth. How do we continue from tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> we are co continue from yesterday, okay? It's a, a little bit of a joke. No, it's because God transcends time, right? <laughs> yes. So we're continuing uh, okay. from tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> this is a continuation from tomorrow's Bible study. Wow. Did she that's say someone, someone with the broken English and a little bit like that? No, I said so that's powerful. <laughs> See? That's complicated. Oh, that's so good. Okay, my Okay. Come on, we start with a prayer. Okay. With a prayer. Okay. That is how okay, is. Heavenly Father, thank you for our family, our home, and this special time together. We ask for your wisdom and your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay. Okay, okay. This is Grandma. Thank you, Jesus. Now, don't forget, before we start, I want to hear everyone's wish. I not wish, I pray. It should be a little thing <laughs> or a big thing. Mm. I pray to God. I just, actually, I have everything already. That God has given me life and to be here to glorify Him. And I just, the thing that I want to say, God is thank you, God. That is, that is for me. But don't you have a little wish? Something little that I we wish, could do. I wish that someone I love or everybody that I love, you go to heaven with you. That, that was what I was going to say. <laughs> you you yeah. didn't really say it. Okay, I'll rephrase it. One little wish in our beautiful little compound here. Little things that we can do for each other that would make us happy. That's all. Oh, so more on a material level. More I on a material. On a material level, okay. I want uh, Alex to help me turn that into uh, an outdoor fireplace over there. And I want to turn that area over there into a uh, another place to have Bible study in the morning. So we just need an umbrella. And the cushions for the chairs. Mm -hmm. chairs? No, no, for those out there. Oh, for those. There's the a chair. whole other area that we have that mm -hmm. we haven't even uh, haven't even sat there one time. No, that's right. I was telling Larry the other area I'd like is the one down below. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, yeah. Like yeah. That's area. that's another beautiful area. There's so many. And then even the one by your bedroom. How about oh, you, Grandma? What did you? Oh, like? I love tell my us your wish. Yeah, tell us your wish. Okay. Your per your right wish to have it. I, yeah. I would wish that we could all make a, make a list of little tiny things that we think are not important, but yet are when you put them all together, it's hugely important. And uh, one of the things I know that I could do to make you happy and me happy, and, mm -hmm. and of course, Mary, <laughs> Mary is different. He's mm -hmm. he's very easy. Uh, and uh, anyway, and the little ones, I, ha I have every morning I'd like for Alex to check the hummingbird feeders and his plants mm -hmm. that he's going to be watering and taking care of, mm -hmm. okay? That will be his res responsibility. Mm -hmm. And then one new word a, a day, excuse me, says reading. I know that sounds so little and insignificant, but when you add it up for 365 mm -hmm. days, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And that those little things would, and one other thing would make me happy when um, when when uh, uh, Yolanda comes here if she has everything in place she could whip through this house this house and this house and she likes that better she doesn't know where anything goes neither do I we just moved here two weeks and I'm so glad that we get a lot done that is a, right oh definitely you know. no no but I'm saying maybe if every day each one of us did one container. What? I did one twenty container. Oh, you did a lot. One day. <laughs> oh, well, that's true. She empties a lot. Yeah. But know that I mean, we help you. We all do one container. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, that would help you. Mm -hmm. Would you like that? With that little bit, mm -hmm. just that little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Johnny, you next, and Larry, you next with the chair. I want Larry to go through some of our tubs. Larry <laughs> <laughs> starts sorting through there. Well, we're going to put a couple outside yeah, your house I leave it. and then we can start sorting through it. I never out. expected it to say Give that. away, throw away. Or... I cannot wait to do another stage so. yeah, sale. No one will come up here. Or I maybe don't know. Maybe no, you're not. wrong. Maybe not. Maybe people will say, wait, there's people way out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there's going to be great deals. I'll be the only one and they'll all be lined up in the driveway. Like, like with stuff. my idea, no one would come here. Okay. Okay. Anyway, go ahead, Johnny. 
Jeez, I didn't hear your wish. My wish is I want uh, that a big area one. to be green with the in, uh, imitation track. Hey, Lily, I'm, I'm okay, reading. Okay, I'll remember that, Jeez. I'm reading Psalm 78. Okay. And I have a question because you're knowledgeable in these things. When the disciples asked Jesus why he spoke in parables, do you recall how he answered? Because there's a famous exchange yeah, I do recall, in the New um, Testament where a I don't disciple asks him, why do you speak in parables? What did it mean in parables? Part of it is because he wants to make it a mystery that can be, um, that being, can be, the mystery can be achieved through knowing God mm -hmm. and supernatural. And he wants to hide some of the truth from the bad guys. Yes. Um, and that's that's another reason the mystery of the parables. Uh, and, and the other one was that it, it's some of the parables that would make it easier to understand because mm. they wouldn't understand it if he explained it more complex. Mm. Those are the three areas I remember. I mean, but I don't know the details or where they are. Mm. But I do remember that the parables. Uh, help us to understand better as humans, but at the same time, he said in another verse, he's trying to hide the information from the intellectuals. Remember mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. I, I think, look, what, 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 if you ask me, I think he knows that people can't remember much of anything, so he would try to use very few words, but everything, those few words would carry a very important message. Mm. And they could remember it. That would be my best way. I can't remember it. Whole stories, no, they might some, but most people could just remember a little bit. But in those that in that little, uh, a little short statement has to be very powerful and, and teaches a lot. So that's why I think it's a parable. Gee, parable means you say very few words, but it teaches you a lot. Oh, yeah. Remember when I said to you, Jeff, uh, gee. Most people will have lived, but never yeah. lived at all. Well, my goodness, my yeah. life. And I have one good example, too. Very, like, a short word. Super short. Love. Everything. <laughs> you know, when you love, it's everything. Yeah. Right? Greatest commandment. Yeah. Yes. It's all about love. And God is love. Love is God. <laughs> yeah. And the devil is the opposite. Yeah. It's the opposite of love. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Yes. But did you know the opposite of love isn't hate? It's indifference. Well, I haven't heard that before, John. Yeah. Slap me upside the head yeah. with something new. <laughs> yeah, because if you think about it, right, in love, when you still have love and it's not reciprocated and so on, it can generate these negative emotions. Right. But yeah. the real absence of love is indifference. I don't care. Okay, let's take animals. Animals have a love for each other, for family, right? For a bond. But can animals, do animals have indifference? I don't know. They don't seem to have, I mean, some animals seem to have compassion. Yeah. They seem, but, but we, I can't tell if it's I'm portraying these traits onto them mm -hmm. or whether or not they're really feeling it. Can animals hate? Yeah, they'll growl. I, but, they don't. I, I but is that really hate? I don't know. It's difficult. Fear. Hate happens fear. in nature. Fear. Fear. Fear I think it would be hate. a fear, yeah. That's difficult to entangle what yeah. would be instinctual or to what they're... Hate is when you want to see somebody yeah. hurt. Do animals have that? Are there animals that want to see something hurt? They're they get hurt. enjoyment off You'll see something them. hurt. Uh, you see like where a cat will bring back a mouse but they don't kill it. and then They, they kind of torture it. Yeah. You, but are they doing that? Is that, that playing or is that... Wanting yeah, they're playing, it. or they just enjoy the sensation of having catching something because we can't tell. Uh, uh, You're just guessing by watching. And, you know, there's a there's a famous movie where they have the uh, the the child is fascinated with the tiger, and uh, the dad is telling the child, yeah. "Don't go close to it. You're in." You're importing your qualities onto the tiger. Is that the life of tiger? Yeah, the life, life of tiger. Of tiger. Yeah. Yeah. You're imparting yeah. your qualities onto the tiger. And uh, you're thinking that he is kind and fun and gentle and loving and oh, so on. We do that with lawyers. Right. And they're <laughs> ferocious. And, uh, <laughs> you know what I know? I just want to make this one point. 
these parables or these stories from the past and people who are very knowledgeable about the Bible. Some of these things going over and over and over and over and over doesn't allow for time that you could impart very important things to teachings or, or, or awareness or thoughts that would be so, so powerful, but we can't because we're always going over these old, old stories. And we, like you said, uh, and I like that about the parables, I like that because that's more, more inclusive of all the things that people need to remember, but not short, you know, people only can remember a little bit for, for a little, a long, oh, for a very short time. Anyway, I just want to know, why do we go over and over and over these stories, over and over? Is it to look at them from a different perspective? Well, I mean, wouldn't you agree that if you read the book Moby Dick more than once, you might... Uh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. But you don't feel the same way about the Bible. No, because you know what? I don't hear people having the same type of subject, uh, c uh, conversations. That's what it is. No, but you're right. That's very true. Correct? Mm -hmm. You know how many books is in the Bible? Mm -hmm. I have to look at the context. <laughs> but there's other, there's other scriptural books that have been taken out of the Bible when they started putting it together and then putting back into the Bible. The book of Revelations was not put in the Bible for until 700 AD. Did you know that? No. It was considered blasphemy. So the Constantine and this group kept it out. So there's other books that were in there in 333, but were taken out, and other ones taken out, putting back in. So this is interesting. We should be reading all these other books, too. <coughs> I like that statement. But do you understand what I'm saying? When I hear them over and over, and I'm saying, my goodness, are they speaking to people that are so dense that they don't get anything, and they have to be dependent on this other thing? Well, no, watch let's, this. Open the, let's open the doors to more things that could come from from these, from these, from these, from these. Well, watch this, watch this. So, in the Bible, during the last days in Revelations, um, the people left on the earth are going to go into the caves and hide. And what are they hiding from? Mommy, mommy, the face of God. Mommy. You, in the Bible, in Revelations, mommy. they will, all of the people, the kings of the earth, and the, and, and you see, even the slaves are going to go into the earth and hide and they're gonna they're going to hide from the face of God and they're gonna hope that the rocks fall on them because that's in the Bible. However, tell me one Christian that wants to hide from the face of God. Many. Many. Okay, well they're not really Christians then. Tell me one born again lover of God that wants to hide from God. I thought it's I can I we want to we want to see God. You want to see God, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, so you're not one of those that are in that are wanting to find so there's no reels without Christians. That's helped me. So that one passage, if I read it and go, okay, I would walk away and say, fine, I understand. But if you look deeper in it, it's saying that there's no one left on earth that really loves the Lord and knows the Lord. Because yeah. they want to see God. So that indicates a rapture to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, so see, why not look see. deeper mm -hmm. at all these things? There's so many things that we can look deeper at. That's, a, that's my point. So people's conversations are so limited, and then their mind is is uh, so accustomed to it, just the same stories over and over, over and over. And whereas what Larry was saying, what Tony was saying, that all of those are two parts. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Hi. 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 Come in the Maybe my mama and daddy is shared. Do you There you go. Alex, are you going to be yeah. here? You, you don't have to leave, do you? Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right off the weekend. I'm so happy you joined us. Yeah, yeah. This is very nice. Mm -hmm. I usually leave now when, like, when you guys can go to the store if you need to. Mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just I just wanted very much to get that point um, mm -hmm. across. So, uh, if I understand it correctly, you're saying that uh, mm -hmm. you're hearing people discuss the same biblical stories and you're not gleaning anything from it and you well, don't think that people gain anything from well because most of them are so dense they don't know how to think at a very deep level but the, but it's interesting though why are we even talking about other people i was more interested in talking about our group well but even even we go back to the same stories so we're part of that group of the other people well 
not that not that we do it um, you know on purpose it just automatically happens because that's what everybody else does mm -hmm. see and we think we're gonna, that's a good idea <clears throat> because everybody does that I say to you you could get so much more out of these profound stories and, and these words of wisdom if you're willing to go on a deeper level rather than just surface oh yeah David uh, and Goliath well, he killed he killed Goliath with the stone it's amazing absolutely amazing incredible which I understand and then we go to um, question that or somebody might say well, well what do you think about that do you, do you know what I mean but the implication is level. pretty profound in the context of the Bible meaning that you know, historically David is the ancestor of Jesus so if those events didn't happen then David was yeah. oh, well, see I didn't know that yeah and that's why you know mm -hmm. the, the deeper you dig into it then you see mm -hmm. how the whole framework fits but, together. But that's my point you should be uh, you, that is what you're supposed to do you agree Dr. when you love someone when you love someone you have an insatiable desire to get to know them deeper right when you love god you have an insatiable desire to mm -hmm. get to know more about god Absolutely. Desire. the more you love the more desire you have to get deeper but see deeper. we don't have conversations like that for example you say okay what is it that is so profound in your opinion about god's love and then another one would say, well, what is your opinion about God's love is so deep? For example, what comes to my mind, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, since we're speaking of love, oh, Elizabeth Barrett Browning and her husband had such a profound depth of emotion that if men and women knew about that, they would say, wow, I didn't know that. How wonderful, you see? But they don't know about Elizabeth Barrett Browning. How did those two develop such a deep love that goes so deep and so beautiful that they write about it and it's gone for 200 years, you know, it's still, it's still so amazing. And I think that the breakdown between men and women is so vast that that's something they need desperately. You know, this is interesting because I, I think this brings up a, a point that I've heard mom make many, many times. And, and what I think it all kind of comes back to is she observes Christians, mm -hmm. right? And she looks at them and she says, look at them with all their foibles and all their silliness. And uh, that, that to her means that, that the Bible or Christianity isn't helpful because there are all these people suffering from all the yeah, same stupid decisions yeah, that right. they make yeah, and exactly. that their lives over are upside and down over and, and over mean to each over. other. And so subsequently, based on that, she she mm. believes that uh, that that there are problems with uh, these teachings, and that the value of them is less. Correct. Than, uh, she believes that you know, if this were real truth and real substance, that people would look into it and they have these miraculous transformations. I think it takes which that. we can see on a spiritual level because mm -hmm. we understand that people are sinful and fallen, and they're going to still struggle. With stupid things. What about the uh, place in the world where <clears throat> people who don't believe in God at all are in the highest positions of power? Uh, what a universe. good question. Oh, yeah. Well, they discussed Where, that in the oh, Bible. Oh, oh, pagans, no, it's, I love that question. Kings and I just so love on. it. <laughs> but, but are you saying why would they be rewarded for that, right? Well, invariably, they good all question. fall. You know, they all fall down. It says in here that, uh, you know, the. Uh, the proudest will be made humble, and the humblest will be will come first. Okay. See, I love those short statements. Yeah. Go ahead, Jean. I just like love uh, Alex, like like what he just asked, right? And very and good answer question. that he also answered yesterday, right? And if you look to the kingdom, the kingdom is built, like over, right? How long the kingdom of uh, Roman is last? How long? I would right. Oh yeah. Uh, um, what do you call um? Roman I would Roman. say why is there so much progress? Rome, Rome, Rome. Rome. Uh, I, I don't know the exact numbers. Ma, ma, so it's not two thousand. No, I was oh, two thousand years ago. Say, I thought you were asking yeah, when they was have it. the answer. No, God already. Grandma, what a good oh, point. Go ahead, go ahead, Jesus. The Roman kingdom, how long is last? A uh, two thousand. Yeah. 
four hundred years. How do you feel? The Roman Empire. Yeah, maybe two thousand seven hundred years. It depends on when you think, it, when you read about it historically, then you would say, "Oh yeah, this." Is like a, uh, I know Roman, right? But each king, each king mm -hmm. that considered as the king in the world, mm -hmm. how long they last? I don't think they last one per king. They well, don't last like more than on their lifetime, right? But look at Jesus' kingdom. It did not really like a, you know, a uh, work. His kingdom may have fell, but why? Since two thousand years ago, he had just twelve disciples, you know, and um, I, I, and why now is the kingdom is still here? Because it's God. He's God. I understand what you're saying, but I would look at the situation and say. Why is it that these same stories of these people going to church, millions and millions of them, most of them never, never have any breakthroughs? I, I believe they, they because, are a lot. Because I think humans are smart enough. That's just my opinion, my observation. But they're never trained, not from school. From school, they teach you to close your mind. They never say, oh, ask questions. Oh, no, no. oh I would feel so dumb. I'm going to shut my mouth. Can I uh, interject here? Yes. Go ahead. <coughs> uh, this is uh, this is this is important uh, as only it relates to me. Selfishly, uh, I'll give you my interpretation of only how I have experienced it and read it. Mm -hmm. um, when Peter was asked by Jesus, "Who do you think I am, Peter?" and Peter says, "Well, you're the Messiah. You're the Son of God," and Jesus. He, you know, he mentally said, him. you only knew that by my father. Yes, yeah. very powerful. You didn't, you didn't get that by reading. You didn't get that by the mm -hmm. intellect, by mm -hmm. your high IQ or low IQ. <laughs> you got it by a magical, supernatural uh, download of information. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make that clear. And then Jesus also said, you cannot know my father unless through me. Yes. And you can't know me unless through my father. Well, you will not know Jesus through the Bible, and you will not know Jesus through Bible studies. You will only know Jesus through the Father, and you will only know the Father through Jesus. So how do you know the Father? Through a magical, supernatural download. That is, you know, another mystery that blows my mind? And this is just me. I think that's true. Another that's mystery that blows my mind is Jesus said, when they went to King Solomon, can you imagine this? You're King Solomon. And this is David's son, by the way. Oh, by the way, the, what did it say? It's John 14, verse 6. To the, go to the Father by, by Jesus. Super, it's a yeah. knowledge of God is 100% mm -hmm. not knowledge of us. us. Mm -hmm. And we can intellectualize. I've seen great scholars. I was a Jewish chaplain assistant. Some of those rabbis are the most intelligent people I've ever met in my life. And, and they know the Bible like any more than anybody else. But the, the people that I've seen that really know God were the simplest people. And you saw that in their heart. Yeah, They have a supernatural download what you're saying of who is God sincerity. is. Sincerity, you're getting back to something Alex, so you obvious uh, and no so important. Gene agrees with me on this point. Sincerity... Without that, nothing works. Yeah. Nothing works. It, exactly. There is no Being ability. Being true to yourself, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a supernatural download to know God. It is not through intellectual. And the Christian churches today, especially the Catholic Church, the Mormon Church, are pushing you to learn about God through this intellectual understanding. You'll never find God no. that way. And the best of the best in those churches, the, the cardinals, um, the rabbis, the uh, the Mormon, um, the, the Mormon top, you know, uh, top leaders of the church, they're really good at knowing the law of their church, but they don't really have, in my spirit. opinion, okay. the spirit of God. In them. The spirit is so very I, important. Now, I got to say that yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the knowledge of God, God. I see God one last thing. He's sitting here and he goes, "If you seek me, if you really are interested in seeking me." Show me. And then, you know, he's not even paying attention. And then this person goes, I want to know you, God. So he gets God's attention. I want to know you, God. Let me find you. And God sees the people really saying, God, I don't know who you are, but I want to find you. And those are the people that he gives the attention to. Not the scholars and the philosophers, but these simple people that say, 
I gotta find you, God. Help me find you. And they said, you know what? I'm gonna give you a little download and let's see what you do with it. There you go. A little bit later, they said, they, oh God, you give you I want to know more. And they yeah, said, you know you what? See. I'm gonna give you another little download. <laughs> that's how oh, you that's find a great God. analogy. I that's love how you it. find God. Yeah, I think people are so fearful love of love yeah. that yeah. they don't even know why they fear it so much. This is my opinion. But it's interesting, though. Mom, it, you know, really looks at this in a, in a very grand scale and looks at how Christianity, uh, how how uh, people, you know, groups of people uh, respond to Christianity. That's uh, very interesting to her. She looks at that. I look at the big picture. And mm -hmm. she, and she, uh, she uses that to help gauge the value. You know, she looks at how many I people do. do I believe this has helped? Mm -hmm. And uh, she doesn't seem like she's seeing uh, a lot of people, in her opinion, who are helped that uh, are benefiting from Christianity, and therefore, uh, perhaps it's faulty. I think it's not delivered in the words that are correct. For example, I've never met you before, G, but I'm going to think she's sinful. And she's going to think I'm sinful. Why? Well, because be I believe no one. <laughs> that I, would be yeah. correct. Well, well, you're saying that's correct. Yes. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. To an ordinary dum-dum, you're speaking to with millions of people, whether it's, you know, mega church or small church, they do not understand that at all. Can that's I not correct. You cannot say that. You don't know how they're interpreting it. I say you have to be very careful of the words you use. It's more powerful than the sword. Well, I have a crazy question to ask. Yes. If you were God, and uh, so you're the supernatural God of the universe, mm -hmm. and you have these humans, right, who you created, you know, to love you, and you wanted to communicate with them, how would you go about it? How would I go about it? Oh, that, that's an interesting question. I would understand that they are like very young children. And I would, I would try to assess, if I had this ability, what level are most of them at? Kindergarten, first grade, you know? Because when they give the test, they find out that they're such a low level of understanding. Well, okay. my mom has a healthy disrespect are you talking for, about their... <laughs> for human intelligence. Okay, but... Are you talking about their grade in spirituality or their grade in uh, In understanding, in yeah. Their, their grade of knowledge in general that, that they... What is their capacity to learn things? Let's, let's look at it, that first. It depends what subject they are interested. Well, let's we, say... I would say that people have different... Uh, Ability, different talent, different interesting. But that, we're discussing that's religion I, now. Uh -huh. and, and most of them, if you were to ask them after a sermon, well, what did you think of it? Just, again, again, there's this see. big push about using uh -huh. our knowledge to find God. And I, I think that is a, that is a, 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 a a thing that religion had created. You find God by the greatest commandment, mm -hmm. by knowing God. And see, when you when you seek Him, you can read the Bible and say, "I want to, I want to find you, God. I'm going to read the Bible to find you." And and that's one person. And that person says, "Oh, I'm going to read the Bible and find the proof that you're in here." Yeah. Now that's a, that's a different. That guy will yeah. never find God. Mm. Never find um, God. Uh, they're going to be smart, and they're going to be getting a lot of money being theologian, but they're not going to know God. And then the other, the biggest mystery she have one? in my life, she have one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. the biggest mystery is like it? when Solomon was asked, um, what do you want? God asked Solomon, I mean, John, if I said, if God says, John, what do you want? And what did Solomon say? Remember what he said? Sure, another one? I'll give you anything you want. He, he, you remember this, Angela? Solomon was asked by God, I will give you, Angela, anything you want by God. He, he, what did Solomon say? Does anybody remember? He, he, that's the one that he said, I want uh, God and the blessing. And uh, is that the, the part of that one, the Solomon? Is that, that one? Yes, I, but, I, but I don't Solomon really remember, answered. but I don't know how to say it because I, I learned about that too. Uh, like a, the, <laughs> the, the knowledge, the wisdom, the wisdom. Right? The the wisdom. Exactly. Yes, what is, the and, wisdom. And was God impressed with wisdom? Yes, the wisdom. He said, well, you didn't ask for a lot of money. 
you didn't ask for these, you know, uh, um, you know, a lot of women, or uh, you asked for wisdom. Yes, I'm so proud of you, Solomon, mm -hmm. that I'm going to give you all of these riches anyway, mm -hmm. because you, and and he and he did also have wisdom. However, let me ask you all this question. I'm sure God asked Jesus that same question. What do you guys think Jesus said? Well, I know Satan asked him that. What is Jesus like? Yeah, well, he, he, he said, said, I will give you this. He didn't ask what Jesus wanted. He says, I'll give you these three things. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because Satan knows Jesus better than us. However, what do you think, what do you theorize if God asked Jesus that, what would Jesus say? Well, ask who? If God asked his son Jesus, uh -huh. Jesus, you're my son. You can have anything you want. What do you want? What do you guys think Jesus said? I would... I would like to sit at your right hand, huh? Right hand? Mm -hmm. What do you say, G? Because Jesus told us what he wants. God asked Jesus. What do you want, Jesus? You can have anything. You can have anything. To be by the Father. That's a good one. Alex? I think so. Okay. I don't know. I couldn't expect that. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> I mean, I think, okay, it's just my opinion. To be led by the I, I would want to see my creation, my creation love each other instead of all this hate. That's what I would say. I would want, Jesus would say, I would want a world of love. Yeah, that's, that's a good answer. That's that what way. I'm saying. That's a beautiful answer, that's too. That's what I'm saying. But Jesus gave us the answer that he gave to God. <laughs> he right in the Bible. And it's a mystery. Remember when Jesus says you have to lose your life to gain it? Mm -hmm. I think the ones that really love Jesus die to themselves. And Jesus says, I'm not here to do my will. Remember that? Mm -hmm. So when Jesus yes, says, I'm right. not here to do my will, he's one saying that he is like us. Mm -hmm. He's separate from God. Yeah. He has a will. Yeah. You can't be with God and, and not have a will. He has mm -hmm. got a separate will. I'm not here to do my will but the will of my Father who sent me. Mm. So his whole life is trying to understand what his Father wants done, not what he wants done. And so I learned from that. And if I was if I was a real honest guy, I'd say, i got, I got to turn Larry Howard off. I, if I could turn Larry Howard off and let God come in, like Jesus did, you would have, if you had 10 minutes with me, Angela, and I was able to turn this, this idiot Larry Howard off, and I let God come in, you would have a better five minutes with me than if, if, I, if it was Larry Howard. Right. I have nothing to offer anybody. Jesus has nothing to offer. Jesus would say, I have nothing to offer anybody. Even though I'm the son, God does. And I'm here to give you God. That's why he says when you see me, you see God. Um, anyway, I just want to, okay. so I'm trying to, I'm trying to live that life and turn Larry Howard off. But how do I do that? I mean, it's, it's about everybody else. It's about, yeah, I don't know how to do that. But I think that's what Jesus did. Solomon wanted something, wisdom, so he never turned himself off. A better wish would be Jesus turn himself off and give God what he wants, not what I want. I don't care about wisdom. I want you. Now, but why would I, what do I have the opportunity? You know, I'm, I'm that. Isn't that kind of a mystery? I think God gave yeah. me such a gift when I did. Yes. About the woman in white, I think God gave me everything in that one moment. In that well, one you moment. you had a sense of God when you experienced that. Yes, a great. That's it. I said, what do you hear me saying, Johnny? How how many times have you heard me say, if I could give you a gift, that would be the ultimate gift? Mm. I was so over. I mean, it was so overwhelming with beauty and love and and peace, and it was so many emotions. But they were all so big and powerful. And who had that experience? And I said to myself, dear God, how, how blessed was I that, and that you chose me to have the woman wife, the be in my life. That's when I was pregnant with John and I was like, that's when I dreamed about the woman in life. She was so beautiful. And I was saying, I never saw beauty like that in my whole life. In other words, I'm trying to say to both of you, God gave me so much in that in that moment that that was just like in any impenetrable wall would be broken down. So you don't believe that that was a dream that you had manufactured, but you believe that that was a supernatural dream. Absolutely. This was no ordinary dream. I don't think it was a dream at all. 
So that you believe there is a realm, a supernatural realm. We yes, believe that okay. there is a, a creator. Yes. Right? Yes, yes absolutely. So we can agree on those things. Yes. But but in other words, uh, what but, I'm but trying to... But where we disagree, I think, is, is that you uh, disagree that uh, there was a chosen people by God. The Jews. Jewish people. Why just why just choose the Jews? Right, but I just I just say Jews. just so we have a Four. foundation where we can uh, have a discussion about it because these are all really interesting points that uh, that that may be a, a falsehood created by a people who wanted to portray themselves as better exactly. than other people. Exactly right on. And, I love uh, what you just said. Uh, subsequently, uh, it would be a false teaching. Well. <clears throat> not coming from pure people who are have no no other agenda is pure love and concern. Mm. See, like when the woman in white came to see me, my goodness, you what kind of gift that was! So that was pure, pure, pure love right. at the very highest level. So you can experience I that. It? So that, you think it exists in the world? I and do. I, think what I do. Larry, Jean, and mm -hmm. I want to share with you. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, we believe that exists as well, mm -hmm. and yes. uh, we want to share with you what we've learned in uh, reading the Bible and uh, and becoming Christian. Yes, and I like what Larry said in that moment. You're saying all the intellect and all that, but this getting back to my moment when I saw the beautiful woman in white. I understand it's just like a flood of such wonderment and such emotions. I can't believe it that you know if everybody had that. I had, I, 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 I had it. I had it. Just Jesus. He loved me. Like that. I that had was a dream. download. That's the download. That's download. I, and you don't want to wake up. About. That's the download that Peter got. You got the download. Now, how long did that download last in your dream? A few minutes? Well, because I was so stunned by her at first, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Then the, the fact that I could focus on her and say, what beauty. I've never seen beauty like that. It was just like overwhelming, that whole experience. But, but when you felt her, you had knowledge of that loving person, right? I, you had knowledge of God just putting his hand on your shoulder. Oh, that was another dream. So when he put his hand on your shoulder, you had knowledge of him. That exactly. was a download. You, exactly. You knew him. Huh. You started getting to know him. Well, in, I, in one or two seconds. I agree friends. with Larry on this. And yeah. I also believe that yes. that is a step that makes mom interested to even mm -hmm. sit here and discuss these things. With he, us. Gave, he gave her a download. Right. You know, like I said before, God is giving downloads to people that are searching. Yes. If you're searching, you will get those downloads and more of them. Here's I believe it's also like planting a seed. Yeah, right? I, 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 I believe, seed like what mom harvest. just said to, you know, about like, um, you know, some what, when people does not know God, and a lot of people in this world, some of them, a lot of them are Jewish people. Like the girl who painted the picture yeah. of Jesus. Yes. She is not Christian, but she see a picture that is how God works with the people who doesn't believe, you know, in the Christianity. And God works through everyone, even you are not Christian. Even some Muslim, a lot of Muslim turn to be Christian because of uh, they were seeking God and, and, getting, and Jesus they, they, The only way is they're getting a download. They're not getting uh -huh. it from their intellect. Oh. You can't get God through your intellect. You can only get it through the download. I agree. That had to be a download. That, what other word could you use to describe the profound impact? I always say if there was any gift I could give you, mm -hmm. that would be it. There would be no mm -hmm. greater gifts I could give. Mom, you know, even the word, the word that they just say the name of uh, God in Jesus, they don't even say it. If you say or if you do anything that you have to watch, because how purity, how clean.